This is ABC News. Keeping Australia informed in more ways, more often. One of the non-essential services that will be closing at midday today around the country are Australian cinemas and screen producers are reporting at least 80% of film and TV shoots won't be going ahead in a move which is set to cost the economy $2 billion. Baz Luhrmann's Elvis biopic is a high-profile casualty of the COVID-19 shutdown, of course, and plans are being altered for all other drama productions that planned to shoot around the country this year. Matt Diener is the CEO of Screen Producers Australia and joins me now. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Now, you've actually carried out a survey on the effect of the coronavirus on the screen industry. What have you found so far? Well, yeah, we thought it was critical that we start to compile the information together for the government to see just what devastation is um, happening already to our sector and what's going to pile on as the, the weeks play out. Because you've got a sector that employs up to 20, 30,000 people in any particular moment um, and it relates a lot of resources together that are a moment in time. And if they go under it's really unlikely you can restart a lot of productions. You've got series already pausing, like Neighbours, you've got the Elvis biopic that you've talked about, and there's just actually hundreds of projections in train in different ways. We've got about 60 of those that have um, reported. The figures are already showing costs about $500 um, million in terms of costs, and we predict on the basis of that that this is going to blow up to about $2 billion. So that is a lot of people that are going to be affected by this. Um, the, we're really delighted with what the government's been doing in terms of the SME approach. However, we do need to see what is going to need to be a way to keep, I think, businesses focused and the employment going until we get to a point we can re-kickstart or reignite the industry. So that's the challenge. Matt, I imagine there'd be a lot of people uh, joining those Centrelink queues this morning who are in this industry. Any idea of, yet of how many people have already sort of been stood down or are waiting in limbo and, and how many more are set to lose their jobs? Look, um, we've got about, I think, 4,000 as the, at the latest tally of people that are now being shut, stood down um, based on the productions that have reported. Uh, and I can see that that growing by the day. You've now got the situation where the distribution of the content, of course, is um, being shut down in cinemas. Thankfully, we have good television services that will keep us going. But I think that the commissioning and at least the opportunities to keep the industry going through the content quotas, through the ABC, is going to be the light at the end of the tunnel that we'll need because there's been reports already that um, there's challenges that broadcasters are looking to see if they can reduce commissioning. Uh, we absolutely do not want that to happen because the, the hope that people will have to be able to come back to jobs in the future is on the basis that there are projects that can happen down the path. And the critical thing at the moment is to keep um, those people as secure as possible, either in the teams that are being working on at the moment, number of projects that are in train, or at least to have them activated, ready to go as soon as the industry can reignite. And you're dealing with productions that are across the country, and every single production intersects with the local community, because the local shoot, of course, hires people at it, it allows them to eat at cafes and, and all of those layers into the community are obviously stopping as well. So we really, really want to see our industry reactivate at the earliest possible moment for the benefit of everything that we pass on. And look, Australians are watching more television probably now and into the future more than ever and we want to be there to be able to support them um, as best we can. There will be productions that can keep going. I think animation, some shoots that um, don't involve a lot of proximity will be able to keep going and that will be great. Live broadcasts we've seen across um, uh, various networks is continuing. Um, but you're going to have productions that are going to be stopped completely and never be seen again. And you're going to have massive problems on the dramas that have had to halt because putting together those people into the various mixes that we come to enjoy on our screens is almost like um, finding a needle in a haystack already. And re-putting that together cannot happen. So there you go. You get this massive blow to what's happening from small productions to large and um, millions lost. That's disappointing. The, the, the government's latest $66 billion stimulus package will include a wage subsidy and a guarantee on loans for small and medium businesses. Is that going to help the industry in any way? Look, it will. And we are absolutely supportive of what's being done and rolled out to date because that provides us 
um, the sector is made up of lots of small and medium businesses that employ people and then are commissioned by the ABC or Channel 9 or Netflix. Those businesses have a hope of being able to re re retain some of the key staff and keep some of the project development going. So what the government's offered is a lifeline and it cannot be thanked enough because that is a way to get over this immediate hump. What we're going to need, though, is something that keeps the, the pathway into the future going, which will be about how we support the sector. Um, there are already a number of mechanisms that the government has, and we're talking to them now about what you can do um, to reignite what are the projects that are now... We call it the pilot light. We just need to keep the pilot lights going, but we need to keep the flame moving quickly when we're ready to go back into production. Um, so at the moment, you'd say that there's some, some Band-Aids that have been uh, doled out quickly, and I think that's going to provide a lot of confidence. Um, but in terms of the long-term health of the sector and to avoid what will be a pretty systematic collapse across um, this industry, but also internationally, across film and television production across other international territories, we're going to need to see something else that um, injects into the sector, something that will allow a, the burst of activity um, to kind of re-get people back into the workforce. A any idea how long this uh, might impact on the industry once you know, the, the pandemic passes. Uh, is there any idea of knowing how long it's going to take to recover from this? That is a really good question because we're dealing with productions that have taken almost five years of gentle development, getting the right people together in the room, developing scripts, bringing together the finance from across the globe and some of the stars that you come, that come together to make content. Um, that is all gone. And so a project like that that's taken so long can never be rebooted quickly. And I can see how with certain productions that have had an ongoing cast um, a, a long time in the mix, you can probably reboot them easily, maybe as soon as, say, the next six months is over. Uh, but you will never get back some of the projects that have been um, developed and maybe have st shut down halfway through because you can't, you may never find that you can get your key lead back from America or mm. uh, the UK or for even from an, an Australian um, uh, person into that project, which means that what has been shot to date, and we're talking about a number of major television dramas that are yet to hit the screen, they will probably all be lost, as in weeks and weeks of work and, and the capturing of content onto uh, digital forms will no longer be able to be used. And that is a massive problem. So I can see how there's delays of getting this industry rebooted maybe for a couple of years, um, given how slow and complicated it is to build the production financing and teams behind them. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much for speaking with me this morning, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.